you want. Usually you want a mirror next to your grooming table here. And usually what you're going to want is a, a nice greyhound comb. Great comb. Good lighting. So you can see what you're doing. Bring out your old lady's glasses if you need them. I have a pair in my pocket. <laughs> and a nice pin brush. And we've already done this. And what we've done is we've brushed all his hair forward. Um, make sure you get all the, every single hair, the muzzle hair and everything. Um, and comb your ears. Because that's going to be like, an important also thing to do. For um, getting a good grip, to really grip the hair, you can either use harsh grooming powder. You can use these little rubber finger cots. Um, you can also use, um, what do you call those rubber things on your fingers for paperwork? Oh, yeah. Rubber paper. No, rubber fingertips. Rubber fingertips. Or just, yeah, harsh cream powder. Um, what I'm going to use for the head is a small stone. You can use a pumice stone. Or you can use a stripping knife if you're careful. Be really careful if you're, you're using a strippy knife of any kind, like the, a McClellan or um, or one of these knives here that most groomers get. You can get them from I don't know. I guess someone at the dog show is mm -hmm. almost any um, <coughs> Davis. Yeah, Davis or Cherry Wood or anything like this. You could you could get one of these. Strippy knives. I'm not going to use that on the head. I, you know, you choose what you you like that's more comfortable for you, but not on the head for me because I, if you break a hair or you wind up curling it, it's going to come in when it grows in. It's gonna, it's gonna show. It's gonna like cut off hair. Um, what you want to do is you want to look for a round um, circle shape around the Karen head. And right here, I've drawn it out. <laughs> And what we want to do is look for the center of that circle, which is typically not with every single dog, depending on his structure, is going to be right about here. But another indication to do it is you're going to wind up grooming. So we're going to start probably at ear first. I'm only going to groom half, groom half of the dog's head so you can see. It won't take too long. But um, what we're going to do first is pull off this um, fuzzy stuff in his ears. And we're going to only pull all the long stuff, but also the short stuff down to about one third down off of his ear. And um, that will also show you. Um, okay. Does this hurt the dog? It, they, it's, it's annoying. Like if you were to pluck your eyebrows, mm -hmm. that's annoying. But you get used to it after a while. Okay, Most people. So a puppy, the first time through, you won't like it. Oh no! And with a puppy, what you will want to do. Um, the question was, does it hurt a dog? And with a puppy, is you, you start them out with give them a giant rawhide to chew on, take out their aggressions on while you're pulling your coat down. You, you can sometimes strap a rawhide here and, while you're pulling, and and they'll gnaw away on it, or um, keep them distracted with toys or whatever but you want to do just a little bit less hair pull just a little bit with puppies so that they kind of get used to it you can um, do it while you're watching TV hold them on your lap and and just pull a little bit of hairs you know a couple of them at a time You'll eventually get used to it and tolerate it pretty well um, here I've, now I did this out of order because I wanted to show you the two-third ear um, the, the, or the one third ear that is showing here. And so I'm going to take this off. It may be Mr. Ernie or something. <laughs> okay, here's what we have here. And what we want to do is look for um, the layers in the coat. And I don't know if you can get a close up. If I brush out this box, if you guys need to come up and look super quick, you can. When I pull up the coat, you want to brush it straight out from where it grows. 
So you're not going to be going like this and trying to find layers. You want to pull it out like a fan from where the coat grows straight out. So I'm pulling this up, and if you look, you can see the second layer of coat in there. And that's what we're going to take the hair down to. You can come up real fast and look if you want to. And see, here's the layers. And that's what we're going to pull it down to. And we're going to do that all over his head. Okay. So that was this. We're going to pull up all this extra stuff. And this is what we kind of want it to be is just the shorter layer Naturally grow layers in his coat. Not how you pull it out. If you wait too long, you miss all those layers. See, see, see that? There's a second layer. That's what you want to look for. That's what you're looking for. We're going straight out from where it grows, like a sunburst or something, or a fan. So I'm gonna put on a. I'm just gonna put on one rubber, rubber finger hat. Pam, could you want to come back here? There's shades down. So, okay. And so what I'm gonna do is, I already got rid of the page I wanted to show you, but <laughs> we're just gonna work on the outside of the dog. And I'm just pulling. And what I'm gonna do is just keep pulling. I'm gonna work on the out part. No, I've got it. I've got it. And I'm just taking the coat. letting you do anything um, you can put an e-cone or a e-collar around his neck so you can't well you're working back here not on the now if you're, you're having a I just saw this on the internet somebody put this on the internet where your your dog is just not letting you do anything um, you can put an e-cone or an e-collar around his neck so you can't... Well, you're working back here, not on his head, obviously. That's not going to work. That's so... <laughs> yes, it was. I think it was the first. So, um, you can go ahead and do that. Just keep working all the way around. <laughs> and um, if, if the dog is turning to you, it's probably because you're taking to the chair like I am. And, um, or they're just being fussy. So I'm just going all the way around the head. You want to comb it forward every now and then and make sure you're not pulling a divot into his head or making um making it too. So that would be Within Jake, you're trying to create, get it out. Just pull it off, get rid of it. So I'm going over here. See how I'm lifting the ear? I'm going to pull, comb this forward. Steady. And there is all the stuff that needs to come out. And I'm pulling it all off. Right here. Like you use your left hand to hold the base of the you hair, can't. so maybe it doesn't pull feathers through. Um, or no, no, I'm, I'm just holding the ear is what I'm holding. I'm not holding oh, the hair. You can, you can. Some people will hold the hair. I think uh, 
that you need yeah. to uh, be careful of that because yeah, sometimes like if you're holding, stuff. like if you're doing this, this is okay to do, mm -hmm. but check and make sure you're not folding the hair under your fingers as you do it. So I you could do that. It's all right. Question. <clears throat> so he has a um, yeah, yeah. a wad here. <laughs> <laughs> a real lot of thick hair here, but when I comb it forward, you'll see that it makes kind of a point there, and I don't like that. So we're gonna try and get rid of some of that. You have to really watch. He luckily he has the layers like where I can do it. Mm -hmm. If he didn't have the layers, and you have to bring him in the show ring. If he's a pet dog, I'm sure he'll live with it. But um, if you're bringing him in the ring, you might want to break the coat, um, and that's a whole other. Um, that's a whole other uh, subject on breaking coat. Um, you don't ever want to scissor it because it really it's not the coat. And you're not allowed to show a scissored dog in the ring anyway. So. Now I'm going to do the muzzle. Got a nice yeah. round shape here. And um, now I'm going to do the muzzle. Now all this you're going to repeat on the other side because he does have two sides to his face. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> so, what I'm doing is I combed it out and you will see, see the line right there, mm -hmm. right there. He actually is easy to do because he has dark tips on his fur, on his coat. And that, that makes it real easy for me, but if you don't have the dark dark tips, you just have to look a little better. And anything that hangs down here, get me that too. Thank you. Pull a little bit more I'll get to that later though. So right here is where I just pulled all this stuff out. I still have a little bit more down here because you want the chin to be included with that. So from the eye down to the chin is all you want it from the entire muzzle. The entire muzzle, see, you're gonna see that all the way down. He's got multiple layers, which is a good thing. Um, and brush the hair out from where it's growing. This is throat hair, I'm not getting into that. Um, you're starting to see it shape up compared to Shake. Come on, Gordy. Come on, shake. <laughs> you're starting to see the difference oh, yeah. in where we're taking the coat to. And you can actually see sometimes, too, when they shake, you want your dog to pretty much shake pretty often um, so that you can get a good perspective of where that coat is going. Make sure to get all this hair that's up underneath his lips, too. See how he has this deep, long hair that sticks in his mouth all the time? <laughs> okay, so. Now, um, let me take this in the back of the bone that is on the back of the head right here. If you feel your dog's head, you're going to feel a bump on the back of his skull, and that's the occiput. And that's where you want your collar to go, your grooming noose or your collar. We can bring them in the ring. So what I'm doing is, uh -oh. I'm pulling all of this long hair off, and I'm making sure it blends with the front. See, there's a lot of it. <laughs> so is the only place that you're 
but you're trying to make the shape is the, the roundness around the face or you're trying to get is there another are you trying to make the, the head look like um, less fluffy maybe or something is that the goal if you don't you? groom it if you don't make it round it's gonna hang and it's oh, gonna okay. look kind of I don't know how to explain a droopy so the, long face or long <coughs> So you, you want to tie, we're tidying it up. Uh -huh. If you want to even imagine a something round, like a ball, that's what okay. you want his head so to. So that's the, the pretty real much thing the that you're trying Yeah, okay. he's kind of obvious like a little scrub. I don't want it to look like a poodle. It's too much grooming. Um, I just wondered if there was anything else to watch for besides that, that round outline. Um, I have some other things, a little, and I'll show you, but that's a little bit, you know, now this is neck hair. I, it's a little bit later in the thing. So what I've done shh, shh, is I'm pulling this long hair out. Okay. All right, almost done here. See how you can see the hairs that don't fall in there. See that big long one and this one? Mm -hmm. And okay, shake it out. You want to shake it out? I'm done with this. So we've done the back of the ears and we gathered the hair. And this is one more thing before you can this, Carol. We're not going to see it here, but from the part that I've done, usually you do, you've repeated this on both sides. So um, usually you would get from ear to ear on the top of the head and comb it up. But since I didn't do the other side of his head, I'm going to do half of his head and pull it up like a mohawk. And this is where you can pretend your hair does And comb that hair straight up. And see, I'm going to pull that down up here. That's kind of cross-checking your work. And also you can get another view of this um, shape of his head. Okay, now I'm done this. <laughs> okay. Before I get to his brows, we are going to um, see there's still a little bit of hair that I can pull down, and it makes it easier once you... Now, I don't think the camera is going to be able to pick this up, but you guys can all come up here real quickly if you want to. And what we're going to do is pull the hair on the one third of the tip of the ear down to the velvet. Okay, and again, using that little stone, your pumice stone or whatever. And um, I'm pulling this little teeny fuzzy wuzzy stuff off. You don't want to pull it down to the skin. If you start seeing pink or skin, stop. You've done way too far. And so, um, we're getting all loose ends up in here. And the ear should look really tidy. You should be able to look at it and see a straight edge. No fuzzy, lippy stuff in there. And while you're at it, you can just kind of Now I'm going to show you how to do a brow. So as you can see, his ear is nice and tiny now. Um, as you can see, if you can look at him right here, you can see there's a point there. You know, brows. This is what I do with the brows and I'm only doing half the head but normally you do the whole head straight down. Make sure your comb gets right into that stop. Stop is the point where the nose hits the, fore the forehead. So if you were, you would stop right there on a here. <laughs> and when you comb straight forward, you're going to see that there's hair hanging down and you will see the line. So what we're doing is we're pulling right up to that line. 
And what happens is it creates shorter hair, a little bit shorter hair here, so that it'll hold up hair on there. This little hair is bugging me, and it's wet with slobber, so <laughs> I have to get a good grip on it. Okay. But, um, Thank you. I actually want to shorten this a little. Well, no, because when the collar comes up here, you're going to see the difference of the groomed head versus the long. Now, he's not too horrible as far as long hair. Because usually sometimes his hair is hanging way down. So that's basically what you want to get there. You want to take up layers at a time to cross check your work and as you see I'm still pulling because I still see things that are not falling in line but you want to just keep going this way keep doing these layers and in the in the beard also in the mustache you are the muscle here you want to do the same couple here right here it's all falling in line that's how you check your work Here it'll say layers across the face. So you're just gonna, what I mean by that is you're just gonna get little layers like I was showing you, like layers like this, you're just checking your work to make sure this is on the other side. Um, just to make sure that it's all falling um, within what you did. Okay. Should all be in your hat, in, in your circle. Um, you look at a side view, because you've removed all of this. Should look like a backward C. So, looking at him here, you can see it is a backward C. And when you want to, uh, the best way to check your work is uh, face your dog. If there's a mirror here, we're going to face him towards it. And when you look in the mirror, you're going to see the opposite image, which, because if you're getting used to what you're seeing, that'll give you a good perspective on a different view of it and make you see flaws that are sticking out of your I think that is it. And that is it. So here you have the... The full and a half. The full um, messy side. <laughs> <laughs> and here you have... Oh, you're much better from over here. Yeah. <laughs> there. There you have it. Yay. Yay. There you go. Right. Thank you, Gordon. And thank you, Vicki, for the most useful. Thank you. So and thank you, Lisa. Is there any more ignorant about this? Is there, I've never seen this before. Um, do you groom the rest? I mean, do you have to strip the rest of the coat? Not just the head, right? Mm -hmm. Everything. Oh, okay. Now, if you have a pet okay. dog, you don't have to. No, That's but if you want them to have them look nice, you know. Yeah, if, 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 if um, you have a pet dog, um, and he doesn't like it. He's he's being really stubborn on table. You can do the head and strip strip the top line and blend it down into the side and strip his tail. It'll keep his skin and um, it'll keep his skin very healthy. His coat will be a whole different color than if you were to um, cut it. And I can show you an example. Would you please please bring Dashi? <laughs> we have a little. Uh, rescue dog one. here who gets clippered. No, I want to compare. I want to compare. You do this. You, well, it depends. If you are rolling the coat for show, you would want to do every two weeks just checking, checking and pulling anything that falls out and, and removing some of the hair so that you get constant new hair coming in. Um, and same with the body. But um, if you're if you are don't if you, if you have a pet dog at home and you don't want to deal with all that. Um, and you want to strip them naked. They'll look like a puppy. Um, 
this little dog here. Bring him over next to Gordon. And you can see He's Clipper. Can you see the difference in the coats? Yeah. If this one softer, is a soft, yeah. silky coat. It loses the color, but you know, he, he's, he's not being he's shown. Still cute. <laughs> he's still a cute little doggy. Still really cute. He gets to live at home and, yeah. you know, be, have That's fun it. and he, you know, but um, generally um, speaking, if you do strip the coat, the coat, you can come up and feel the difference in the coat. Do you mind? No, oh, come on. Feel the coats. This is a clipper coat and it will never grow. Once you cut it, it will never grow back like this unless you pull it out by the root again. So if you're stripping a dog with a stripping knife and, you're, and you break the hair off, make sure you look at your, when, you, when you've when you done the stripping and you got to pull it out. So that is a general. How you the cut hair? I'll show you how pull hair. Well, you uh, you can tell. Uh, well, number one, it'll grow like this. It'll be soft and silky. It's not going to have a texture like his. But right when you do it, can you tell you made a mistake? You can tell. That what you do is when you pull hair out, lay it down on the table, and if the hairs are cut off, you're cutting hair. You'll you'll tell because it's an even broken line where you will see Instead the difference. You will see the difference. Done. See how the, the, the tip where the root came out is lighter and silkier. You can actually see where the, it got pulled out, the little nubs on it and stuff. And um, if you break it, it's going to be shorter, number one, because you've broken it, than the longer hair. And it's going to, you know, you'll see where it's, it almost looks like it was cut. Because that's how sharp some of those uh, stripping knives are. So um, that's just a warning if you're using a knife. Yeah, there is. If you're, if you're using fingers, you don't need to worry about it. If you're using rubber finger cut, if you're using a, even a pumice stone, you gotta still watch a little bit, but not as much as a knife. So this, the trick with the stripping knife is not to twist your wrist in. You gotta pull straight out. And that is it. How about bathing? Do you bathe before or after you do this? Um, so that, we had a big contra, like not.